to make a Jenny Gami table lamp. We have a few samples here to show you. This is probably the very basic and most simple table lamp where we have the base and a solid shade just made out of some cardstock that I really liked and I punched a border here. I think this was a Martha Stewart punch and just attached it to the bottom of the shade. We have another one here which is one of the samples that comes on my Jenny Gammy CD. Um, a bit more art deco I think with a coloured base. A um, little trim around the edge of the shade and we've cut the centre bits out and put some patterned acetate in. And I don't know if you can see this clearly on the video, but you can actually sit a battery operated tea light just inside there and there's a platform for it to sit on if you wanted to do that. This one also comes on the CD. Um, this is a little bit more girly. Um, again, I don't know if you can clearly see this, but the pattern on the acetate is of a rose. I've added a little bit of, of peel off around the, the acetate window here and this frill at the bottom is um, that's actually a quilling frill so if you look for quilling material somewhere you will see frills like that and this sample here I've actually added some black outline peel offs to the acetate and coloured them in with Sakura pens and again that one looks really nice when you have the battery operated tea light inside don't try and use a real tea light, it will catch fire. Never a good idea. So what I'm going to show you is the how to make the base structure of the Jenny Gammy table lamp and then I'm going to show you two different lampshades, two different ways of constructing them. You only need six parts for the actual base, so this one is quite simple to make. We have these two larger sections here and four smaller sections. These three, if you notice, all have two slots at the bottom and a single slot at the top of the base section and these three all have a single slot at the bottom and two slots at the top of the base section. I like to lay them out like this to start with to make sure I've got all the parts that I need and they're all in the right order. I'm going to start by taking these two larger sections and this slot at the bottom here is going to go inside this slot at the top here. So to do that we actually have to bend this whole thing inside this shape here which you're only using card, so bending it is quite simple and straightforward. I tend to use probably about 180 to 220 GSM cardstock, so it does make it easier to bend. And there we have the basic structure forming already. What I'm then going to do is to take the two sections with a single slot at the bottom, and they're going to go inside these slots at the top here. Now to do this, this again has to go inside this section. So... We're just going to push it through and drop it down. And we do exactly the same on the other side. I'm doing this backwards now for the camera. Never a good idea. And there we go. So we now have three sections going from front to back at the bottom and one section going across. I'm going to turn this round. What we now have at the side here is a slot at the top here, a slot at the bottom and a slot at the top. And this coordinates exactly with one of these parts. So this part is going to go over the front, this part is going to go up the middle, and this part is going to go down the back side. So I'm just laying this flat to make it easier to do. And there we have one side already added. I then do exactly the same on the other side. This goes down this section. It goes up through the middle section and down over the far away section. As you see, I'm bending and throwing the card around and that's fine. When you're finished, if the card's a bit bent, you can normally just bend card back into shape or if you've really bent it, then a good idea is to put it through the cuttle bag like what I've done with this one and that actually folds the card nice and, and flat again for you. You can either put it through a cuttle bag or, or some other embossing machine either inside an embossing plate or just on its own without an embossing plate and it will help it go flat again for you. So there we have the main structure of the table lamp. There's now two ways to make the shade. The first option you get on the CD is two sections like this to be cut out, badly cut out in this case. There's a little flap section either side here and these are actually for gluing the sections together. 
So what you would do is I've just put a couple of sticky dots on, but use whatever gluing medium you prefer on that little flap and we're just going to line that up and attach it to that section. And then exactly the same on the other side, a couple of sticky dots, we're just going to line that up and attach it there. So there we already have the lampshade. Let's make that nice and crisp fold in all the directions. Now this I have made out of quite flimsy card. I've done that for all of these, made them out of quite flimsy card. And this is because this will actually sit right over the top here and the bottom holes, little slots here, will slot into these parts at the bottom and the slots at the top here will slot into the sections at the top. So you do actually need to be able to bend this to get them to slot into shape. So if you used quite rigid, rigid card here, that would be quite difficult to do. So you want to use quite flimsy acetate as well. Now, if you were going to apply acetate, um, the shape will come on the CD of the size of the acetate you need, and you just need to attach that inside each window section here. Again, maybe just a little bit of double-sided tape. Now, to put this on, you really just have to squish it down, which isn't as bad as it sounds. So just focus on doing one section at a time, slot the bottom part in and slot the top part over. And then move on to the next section, slot the bottom part in and slot the top part over, bottom in, top over and the last section. There, that wasn't too difficult. And there you see you would have your completed lamp. Now there is an entirely different lamp shade you can use. We have an identical base here that I've already made. Exactly the same, just a tiny bit smaller. And what I've done for this one is it comes in four different sections and they've each got hooks and slots either side. So it's perhaps more true to the Jenny Gammy design. So if you didn't want to have to use glue like what you do on this one, you could actually make it this way. So these have all got slots that actually hook into each other. Now for this one, I've um, stamped some little magnolia tilde images and I've coloured them in with pro markers and I've used a little punch to add some flower detail to the bottom and gone over that with a little bit of glitter. So for each of these, they just slot together edge to edge. So again, you do need to be able to bend the card slightly to make that work. Now you could leave these plain or you could do them out of any card stock you like. But I like the idea of being able to use stamped images. I know they are quite popular at the moment. So you could use whatever stamped images you, you like using. For your end sections there, they can either just remain like that or you can fold them flat. You can do whatever you prefer, but I don't mind them being like that. I think it looks fine. And as you can see, the design will fold perfectly flat. Then you just have to do exactly the same. You just squish it down over the top and slot them in. So into the bottom and bend it under at the top. This is the only tricky part, and because I've already added my rubber stamped images, the cardstock isn't as bendable, but it's still working fine. Um, I think what I would probably recommend is don't add the stamped images or embellishments until after you've made up the table lamp. designs. They fold totally flat, great for packing, great for posting in an envelope and I think that would be adorable on a wedding table. Again, even with a little tea light inside. And there we have the Jenny Gammy table lamp. <laughs>